Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In today's video, we are taking a look at volume scatters and the principal volume shader inside of Blender. And this is something that we use to create this environment that uh, we recently released a tutorial about, sort of concepting these kinds of uh, 3D environments inside of Blender and, and painting them over in, in Photoshop. So it's one of the things that I like, it blows my mind that you can do like this kind of volume stuff in real time, all this runs in Eevee. Uh, yeah, I, like when I figured out that you could do this, it was something, someone on, on a stream of ours that we were doing that was pointing this out. I think they got it from Ian Hubert, the guy who does the crazy, oh, yeah. yeah, like all those videos. It's really, really cool. You should check it out. He has a lot more tips about how to set all this stuff up really quickly. But uh, we started utilizing this and just found it to be really, really powerful. So we wanted to take you through some of the use cases that you might find for these kind of uh, volume shapes. So the way it works, there's like, there's two kinds of these. So let's get into the shading editor. Enable EV again. So we have two types. We have the first one here, which is a volume scatter node. So the way this is created, basically, uh, you create a cube. So let's do this from scratch. You can see all the fog disappears. So I've created a cube and then you assign a material to it. And normally when you assign a material, um, you know, it'll it'll look like this. You'll have the principal BSDF shader will be plugged into the surface. So the first thing you want to do, just get rid of that so we don't have the cube anymore. Then you want to find a volume scatter node. Take the volume into the volume and then poof, everything explodes. So right off the bat, you know, this this bounding box essentially just tells Eevee whatever is inside of this box and has a light to it, illuminate it and then, you know, scatter the light uh, depending on the, the density. So I find the, norm, the default density to be crazy, but maybe for some reason you want that. So for my case, I think I have 0 0.02, maybe it's 0. There we go, something like that. So that gave me a quite nice scatter of fog and it kind of gives a, a general uh, sort of like sheen of fog to the entire scene. And you can, you can move this and, and manipulate it any way you want. So let's say here you can see that these spotlights, they're sort of casting light and creating fog on this statue. So if we just move this down, you can see we start to erase some of the fog. So only where the light cone is inside the bounding box is it actually going to create fog. So you can use this as a really powerful storytelling element, kind of like this, where we created a scene, so like this um, Dark Souls inspired, we have a traveler looking at a, a giant statue holding some souls or something. So this general volume box, I really, I'm a big fan of, because you can place multiple of these in your scene, uh, have one that's maybe higher resolution close to the camera, to create a little bit of fog like this, then you could duplicate that, have it in the background, and maybe have this be lower resolution, and it creates some general fog, you know, behind your subject. So this one I'm a big fan of because you can just throw in lights, and if you want to play around with it, you know, you can just take your, like, take these spotlights. I'm a big fan of the spotlights here just because they create this light cone, kind of gives it a god ray type of feel. But, you know, you can just move these around and tweak them any way you want. And you know, the bigger your, your higher your intensity is in the light, the more it's also gonna affect the, the scatter volumes here. So another one, which is what we have down here, you can see it's kind of going a little haywire while we're recording. So uh, let's click on these, turn this on. You can see these are just planes. And these planes just have a principal volume shader on them. So what the principal sh volume shader does, it just creates, based on the plane's bounding box, it, it just creates a volume here that we can then control. So I'm kind of using these as fog cards to just place around in the scene. And you know, then you can duplicate these around and just rotate them and, and fade them into each other just to create some more, uh, I've done it here, create some low hanging fog that sort of just goes across the scene. The same thing over here by the traveler. Uh, have a fog plane here close to close to the torch. My arm's a little broken, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just something that's close to the torch. And I, I was kind of playing around with the idea of maybe using this 
to later on create some kind of flame effect or something, uh, some kind of weird real time flame effect. But I, I'm still to I still haven't experimented with that yet. But I think you can do a lot of really interesting things with these. So same principle really. Once you have a just your standard shader created on your plane, you just search for again just volume and then you use the principal volume shader, attach that, take the volume into the volume, and then I've just left these by default. Usually that works pretty well for me. Now one thing I have done here is attach this Musgrave texture into the density. So again, just search for Musgrave texture, and then you just take the fact value into the density, and then you can start playing around with the scale. That's like the most basic one. So you have low scale, you can see it just sort of fades everything a little bit. Uh, I find that like if you take down the value here with the Musgrave, you get this undulation in the fog, which creates a really nice, I guess, more organic result. And this you could also animate, right? So if you wanted some kind of fog that's animated, uh, you could even move the planes around and then start to animate these values to have it move a little more organically, probably like at a really, really slow rate, just so it looks natural. Now, the cool thing is, you know, if you have these these volumes here, uh, you can go in and they amp up the color a little bit. If you want party fog, something like that. Now, one thing that confused me in the beginning is actually you see, even though it's a plane, it actually has a uh, it has a bounding box. So you can just scale these up and down depending. It doesn't have to be a plane. You can apply it to a sphere, to a cube, whatever you really like. The planes are nice because they're simple. They don't they don't really take up a lot of space, and you know they're simple in terms of shape. You could even take this, I guess, and uh, apply it to the statue here. Let's try that out. See how that works. <laughs> so Crazy take, experimentation here. So if you take the principal volume shader just plug that into the volume here. Now we have a ghostly figure. It doesn't really respect the bounding box that well, but you know, I guess you could use it for something. But anyway, it's I think it's a really cool tool and I've been using it as a storytelling element to sort of like, maybe you wanna draw attention to something or you wanna fade stuff into the background while you're doing your renders. And, and they can become really, really powerful. And then adding that into in with the noise textures or no, noise notes you can plug into them, you can create some really cool organic fog in there. Now, one thing that got pointed out to me while I was doing this live stream was the fact that under volumetrics, like if you go to your render setting scenes there, then uh, you have this volumetric lighting and you have light clamping, which is by default, I believe set to zero. And that makes all the lights and the points of origin of the light actually show up. And for what I was doing at the time, it wasn't really that helpful because I didn't want uh, these spots to show up in the scene. It just kind of looked weird. So unintuitively, I, I don't know, for me at least, you have to set the clamping to one uh, and then they go away. The downside to this is that some of the intensity is lost in the light as well. So if we just compare that to this, it's not as intense anymore. But, you know, then you can just up the intensity of the light a little bit to compensate for it, but then you won't have these sort of ugly spots of light in your scene, basically. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how you use volume scatters and the principal volume shader inside a blender. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I think it's impressive what you can start to do in this, especially real time. And uh, I guess if you want to see more like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And... Leave a little comment down below if you want to see if there's anything else you would want us to cover with uh, with this, and we'd be more than happy to. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.